Hey guys, this is Rich. I'm in Harbor Village in Bonaire on the Honeybee. We just got her back from refurbishing. Today uh, we're going to meet with Dominic Serafini and Kathy Salisbury to talk about Jacques Cousteau and the Calypso expeditions. You know, I look at what we have today, dive computers, regulators, uh, camera housings, uh, and I think we take for granted what it was like to be diving back in the 1950s and 1940s uh, when they didn't have all of these things um, and uh, or they had to invent them. We're also going to get an inside look into the creative process of uh, Kathy and Dominic and so with that let's go meet them. This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is a diver's life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true. So true that my life, that my life is a seashell. Diving at night now in uh, Bloodlet last night. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna cook. You are gonna cook. This I'm is a good deal. I'm gonna cook for you and Doreen and Sure, Dominique. sure. Yeah, we'll we, have blind fish. That sounds wonderful. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Tonight. If you can, if you feel up to it, that'd be great. Tonight. 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 All right, we'll do it tonight. Cool. Okay. All right. We're we gonna do a video. Uh, if you want. Okay. We shall do that. We we will uh, talk about the uh, custo time. Yeah. Let's do like that. It. Well guys, welcome to uh, Kryland Dyke in Bonaire, and uh, we're at the home of Kathy Salisbury and Dominic Serafini, the illustrator of the uh, Cousteau expeditions, and Kathy is one of the, was the photographer for the Dreamwreck series. Um, so it's a beautiful home you have here, I love all the pictures you have. But especially we're in front of the sea. And we're in front of the sea. Yeah, this is a, a fantastic place. We'll, we'll give you a tour around a little bit, a little bit later. Uh, so I wanted to start out, Dominic. I think everybody wants to know. Okay. What was it like? What was Cousteau like? Can you put us back in the time when you first went to meet him? What was France but like back then? I think to, for understand the, the Cousteau team story, yeah. we have to go back in, back in time. Because now we're in 2012, uh, 20, yes. 2020, mm -hmm. yeah. excuse me for my English. <laughs> and um, Cousteau was born in 1910. Yes. And all the team of uh, was with Cousteau, like Albert Falco, yeah? Yes. He was born in 1927. Yes. Uh, all these people, they were born before the, the Second War. Yes. Okay. And Cousteau was, um, uh, was a military officer. Naval military officers. I think people looking through the film like a, a diver, ecologist, um, etc. No, no, he was uh, quite a very, very strict uh, oh. naval officer. Uh -huh. he, he fought during the war, etc. Et and all the team of, uh, of Cousteau, like Falco here, mm -hmm. they were part of the, of the war. That means they, they start during the war. Mm -hmm. That means they had the spirit of, of uh, like commando guy. Mm -hmm. no, not uh, holiday uh, diving uh, recreation. Oh. So Cousteau invent the aqualum that we use now, the system with the with the help of a, a, an engineer, uh, Gagnon, during the war, mm -hmm. and he create uh, the, all the system during the war. Mm -hmm. Again, war, war, war. And uh, I just born in 1946, 
yes. after the war, the same year that Gusto put the first regulator on the market. Oh, it was that, that year? Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So wh when I born, mm -hmm. uh, my parents had no idea about diving, had no idea about the sea, because the French, they didn't have a holiday. Oh, that's true. Yeah. They, they didn't have a car, they didn't have a TV. They, they could look some film in black and white, that's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. That means they were living in Paris, we have been, by miracle, uh, not uh, blasted by the German, but after the war, we are just feeling the same atmosphere that during the war. Uh, for four years, uh, the Germans, they were in France, and mm -hmm. we had to, to accept the fear to, to be arrested or to be killed by the German the deportation. Fear. So wh when I born, it was because the French liberate, I mean liberated by the American. Mm -hmm. Because my friend, my, my father didn't want to have any kid till the red German would be in France. Ah. So by chance, the German w went away and uh, my parents uh, created me. And uh, I was lucky to born in, a, in an island in the middle of Paris where the Seine. And, uh, yes, in the picture you were yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, you found so many good pictures for your film. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And the people here, they were living in a very close play, place. Yeah, we didn't travel. No, because they could afford No, no, we didn't travel. We didn't, there was no supermarket, there was no car. Paris right. was, was with no car, practically. Right. We had no idea to travel. There was mm -hmm. no plane. To have the idea to take a plane. So we were living in a little um, quarter. Oh, I can say that. Uh, no, I think quarter. Yeah. Quarter yeah, with, yeah. with a friends and family. and. <coughs> we could go buy a uh, little food in the corner of the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, that would be my life, yeah. normally. That would be my life. And one day, in 1956, um, uh, when mm -hmm. I was 10, I was lucky enough that my parents took me to, uh, to see the, the film, a very strange film called Silent World. Mm -hmm. A very big film on a big screen with uh, the first um, shot of some we see some diver going down in the blue, carrying some uh, torch. Yeah. torch. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't. I was in shock. Because I said, "Oh, it's possible." Yeah. Why not me? Because I learned. I learned swimming in the Seine with my father. I knew uh -huh. how to swim. Uh -huh. And maybe one day I could do that. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the spark to give me the hope that I will escape of the gray life of a little parrot. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. So you were driven to do that from that point. So yeah. in fact, Kukuso was like a magician. Mm -hmm. That means uh, because he, he could he could do the expedition with the Calypso. Oh, I have here a book. Maybe you you don't know mm -hmm. that the Calypso was um, was in fact the boat from the war again. Oh, okay. Let me just show that for people here. Oh, yeah, it was a military minesweeper. Military right? minesweeper built, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. built in America in 1942. Yeah. And Cousteau uh, changed it year by year. Mm -hmm. But the roots of the Cousteau story was based on the, on the war. Ba basically, the organization of the life aboard Calypso, mm -hmm. with the divers, right, was not a military, military boat, but it was a military organization Yeah, by the spirit of Cousteau. It was run that way, yeah? It run that way. But Cousteau was not a very good military. He didn't like it. He was more, more like an anarchist. <laughs> OK. Yeah, so he, he, was, um, he married uh, Simone Cousteau. Yeah. Simone Melchior was uh, uh, from a family of uh, admiral, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. So he could find with her the money and the support to have another life. Yeah. That Simone who said, I, you have to quit the, the military, the Navy. We need our boat. I want my boat. Oh, really? She was yeah, the one. Okay. okay. Simone. All right. And uh, she wanted his, uh, her own boat. And uh, she pushed uh, Gusto to, to be out of the service, military naval service. And um, one day Cousteau said to me, imagine if I would stay in a naval service, I would be an, an admiral. Wow, <laughs> what, what a stupid life. Yeah. 
So the, the, these two people, these couples, they were free mind. Mm -hmm. They were like aristocrat. Okay. I mean, the rules are good for the for the normal people. Yes. We have to create our our rules. Our so rules. that's why he created this aquarium. Mm -hmm. So he could do something and no, nobody has done before. And he recruit a, a group of uh, divers like Falco and the one Dumas, huh? who was a free spirit too. Yeah. And I really like it. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be I would be in a good place with these people. I mean, what was it like when you first met them on the on the boat? I mean, they you know. I mean, I, I really felt Falco was kind of quiet person. I felt yeah yeah. yeah. But but uh, Gusto was very very polite, very charming. Yeah. Very well educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody on board was very friendly. So I, when the first time I've seen Cousteau in a, in, a, uh, in Paris when he was making a conference, yeah. he was he was very polite, yeah. very polite. But you, you you could feel he knew you have to knew you have to know your place your place with him. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, after on board, the rules were very simple, and uh, you never should uh, shout or uh -huh. fight. Mm -hmm. Uh, nothing wrong could be done. Okay. That Cousteau we know, so Falco was the one to to create a tampon mm -hmm. between uh, Cousteau and the uh, problem. Cousteau was not very uh, not very happy to deal with any small problem. If you kept on presenting them to him, he wouldn't he would you wouldn't be on the boat for very long. Is that I know. Uh, in uh, the rule on board was simple: the three three mistake. Oh, okay. Three mistake out. Oh, that, that covers it. And uh, Falco yeah. explained that uh, you come uh, you come with a custo team. In fact, you are the custo machine. Mm -hmm. You have you have the bolt, mm -hmm. screw on uh, on the nut. Yeah. The mm -hmm. nut, uh, if you don't fit, you don't stay. You don't. By chance, I could um, seduce uh, Interes Custo by my by my sketch mm -hmm. to make a book like that. Mm -hmm. I see this book. And Custo Custo really li really appreciate my my work. Because I was a quite a very, very, very realistic um, illustrator. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, what I find about your work is the detail. Yeah, yeah, but the, the 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 page, every page is a big one. Yeah, an original page of the book. That means every page in the book that people look like so small with a lot of detail. That means the reduction uh, uh, makes the the sketch quite strange because you see a lot of detail. You don't understand how somebody could do that. That's all. Yeah, it's uh, it takes a lot of patience too. But, but I really like it because um, first it was, my my goal with Cousteau was not only to make a, a series of books like bande dessinée like we see in France, yeah. but to make like a sort of uh, reportage. Mm -hmm. I insist uh, I, I could go in a calypso, make sketch, understand uh, how they. They, they, how they, they work, how they, they live on Calypso. I didn't want to uh, be the guy who just copied the photo or the film. No. Well, I was going you were you were there. I mean, so like the one with the uh, in the shark cage. Yeah, 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 yeah. shark cage. But I, I dug a lot with, uh, with the diver and, uh, mm -hmm. together. I, w I went even in a flying saucer. You know that? Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I dove in this. Uh, that was uh, the great Le Laban, right? No, I was with, with Franco. Oh, oh, you went there. So you actually, yes, yeah, so you've been inside of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's really, that's, so where did you, where did you go in the saucer? Where were some of the places? In, um, in the Marquesas Island. Okay. Well, it was just a, a training dive, so it was not important. It was looking more a guy to, to put the weight for the balance of the, of the sub. You need two people. Oh. So you always had to have two people in there. Yeah. The oh, oh, okay. To make it balance. So this time, nobody was uh, available. So uh -huh. it, took, it took me like if, like a balance. Because first, you go in the sub, you have to to check your weight. Okay. So they said. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I said your weight. You were the weight of uh, the pilot and me. Mm -hmm. I was just. Uh, you were brought on for balance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just balance. Okay. You know, I, I knew I knew my my, my place about the Calypso. I was just an illustrator who come on board to participate and to observe. Mm -hmm. I had no, I had no right to, to say you have to do that. Um, and that, that saucer was incredible. That you were, I mean, it was ingenious at using the <laughs> mercury to do the, the oh, but it's, inclination. It, it, it was very simple. Basically, it is just a metallic sphera. Okay. 
and, yeah. and around you have all the plastic. Uh, uh, Let's take a look. So, so you got, so you got the plastic around that and with, 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 the, with the battery and everything. So it was, it was created to fit on the calypso. The, they, they, they need uh, to lift the, mm -hmm. the sub, put back on the calypso, mm -hmm. and it was just a, a very small place to, to fit uh, the, the flying saucer. André Laban, he explained me how, uh, here you have a very good photo, yeah. that okay. uh, after a dive in the Red Sea, a deep dive, yeah. also went to 100 meters by air, because this time there was no, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And he said, that's, that's stupid that um, we don't, okay, mm -hmm. you can see. Yeah. The word would sit in there. Uh -huh. we, 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 can, we can go deeper. And uh, he, he was on a, on a table for the dinner. There was a place where he was talking on the Calypso. Mm -hmm. And he took two plates. Uh -huh. Two plates like that, like that. You see what I mean? Yeah. And he turned to Laban and said, you see what I want? OK. Something like that. No, no propeller, jet, and light. Do it. That was it. That was it. And they, they worked for like that for, for five years huh, to make it. Yeah, he had actually done nothing like that before when he when he came aboard the Eclipse. So I mean, he no, no, no. By the when you have a Rolex watch, uh -huh. Rolex watch submarine had been had been created aboard Calypso. Uh huh. Uh, the Calypso thought had been created aboard Calypso. Mm -hmm. Most of the light that you use had been created aboard Calypso. Because you have to understand that now when we go diving, okay, we go to the shop, we buy the equipment, the computer, blah, 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 the film. In this time, they had to create everything, even the film. They didn't make everything. They, they made everything. The housings too, he made, that was the first thing he did. Didn't he make a housing first? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He made a housing and, uh, with Dumas, yeah. uh, another uh, member, and uh, they create everything they need because it was just, uh, again, just out of the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dominic, one of the things that we didn't get to talk about was the GERS um, and how that folded into uh, the Calypso being a research, the only research vessel in France at that time and how that all came together. Okay, I understand that people don't know about this period of life of Cousteau, the GERS, a group d'études de recherche marine, because people know Cousteau by the TV series in America. Yes. But this TV series starts in 1970, yeah. something like that. Then Cousteau start uh, diving in 1940, yes. uh, something like that, even before the war. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, during the war, Cousteau was a naval officer in the south of France, and he was um, working on different uh, type of uh, uh, diving system. He, he tried the close circuit oxygen, he tried everything. Yes. And finally, he got the idea to, to build the aqualon mm -hmm. uh, with the tank and a regulator. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a big difference that all the, all the workers on the water, they, they were uh, scaphanders. Yes. They were wa wa working on the bottom. Yes. And with the new system, new coastal system, they, they could swim. Right. That was very different. So the, the French uh, uh, army yeah. was very interested by the system. So they asked Cousteau to develop this system. Yes. And Cousteau created this uh, group, group de recherche études sous-marines, mm -hmm. with Dumas and Taillet. Mm -hmm. And they had the uh, support of the, of the naval organization. Mm -hmm. And for years, they were working how to make the regu regulator of the system better, mm -hmm. and how to calculate the decompression table. Yes. So suddenly they, they had this system they, they could dive, but they didn't know what, what, where was the limit. Mm -hmm. So they start to make a lot of um, tests, and even they went to 120 meters yeah. Yeah, with this system, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the guys uh, died. Yes. And so they say, okay, 120 is too, too deep. Because mm -hmm. they designed there was a military organization, I mean, uh, it's like a war. Mm -hmm. You go to the war, okay, you, you lose one soldier, two soldiers, but you keep going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and Cousteau was not only the one who invented, he was testing yes. the system, he was testing on himself. Mm -hmm. So this group of uh, uh, research submarine, they were working on how to get out of the mine, of the mine, the German mine in the, in the coast, 
Yeah, because I mean, the the hard hat people would have set up the those are uh, magnetic, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so and also yeah. they, they had to work on the bottom; they couldn't find the mine. I see. Yes. Right. It was better to 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 pull behind the boat. Uh, a group of divers, they could look if they, they find mines. A lot of boats sank after the war in France, even by the German mine. Oh, I would imagine, yeah. Well, there were a lot. Yeah. The, the German, they were, they, they, they could mine everywhere. Everywhere, yes. They, they could. Anyway, so that was uh, the time of the uh, GRS, that means between, I think, between 1945, the end of the war, mm -hmm. till uh, 1950. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, Cousteau start to think to have his own boat. Yes. To do what he wanted exactly. Mm -hmm. By himself. Mm -hmm. So that was he was looking for a boat and he found, with the help of a wife, he could find the Calypso. Mm -hmm. And so he was free suddenly yeah. to do what he wanted. That's fantastic. Just what are a couple of the other things they did with GER, some of the other projects? Oh, but they, 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 they create a lot of um, uh, scuba systems. They create lights, mm -hmm. uh, scooter. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were working on a mixed gas, uh, yeah. trimix, heli heli with helium and etc. Uh -huh. So I mean, all the tech divers mm -hmm. now they use a system that was created in 1945. Yes, and when they and they were benefiting from his yeah. risky work to say that. But in this time, they were they were re really tech tech -ray. They were inventor. They were explorer. Mm -hmm. The ones they are exploiter. I mean, mm -hmm. even me, when I born in 1946, okay, the famous uh, uh, Mistral regulator had been invented. Yes. But not me who invented so I could use it. It, it seems like nothing's impossible, they had to do it. That, is that, that was, really, that was a Cousteau character. He said, if something seems too possible, I don't, I don't care. The thing that really stuck with me was their trip to Antarctica, because that boat really wasn't built. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Well, not an icebreaker. It was a small boat, and wooden boat. boat, and it had been very close to, to go to go down. Huh? Yeah. But that's what I like with Cousteau. I really appreciate him. But yeah. right? when Calypso was covered with ice, uh -huh. it was so heavy that the boat was close to to go down. Yeah. That when they had to dive to repair the the propeller, it was broken. Yeah. Yeah. And they had also a balloon. They had a balloon when they went there? Yeah. It was a small boat. It was the first aim. That was the first time yeah. that diver went to Antarctica. First time. No, nobody, nobody did that before. And the wetsuits were like five mil quarter inch wetsuits that they were diving in Antarctica with. I, they didn't, it kind of proves they didn't know what to expect. No, but that, that was, that was uh, what, what I like in the Cousteau team in this time. They were testing. Yeah. I mean, they were testing. Yeah. Somebody had to test it. Yeah. That was it. That was them. Yeah. They never died. They were never dove mm -hmm. under ice. Mm -hmm. So they, they used uh, some uh, red uh, wetsuit, complete clothes. You put air inside from mm -hmm. Poseidon mm -hmm. with a full mask so yeah. they didn't have a face in the, in the ice. And you, you look, if you look the film, they, they, they were even playing with the snow and the ice and they, they were like kids using all this stuff like toys. Yes. And uh, the team on board, they, they were absolutely, they were young, yeah. they were full of energy, they, they were happy to be there. Even one died, okay, one, one died, the helicopter uh, hit the head of the guy, but they didn't stop the mission. Mm. They definitely had fun, that was clear. They, they had fun, they had fear, yeah. they had uh, emotion, they were adventurous, adventurous mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Now we are, okay, we don't do that if you don't have the insurance, we don't do that, we don't do that. And they said they had no insurance. Yeah, no insurance. Well, no, even the case who was not insured. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, no, no, nobody would insure the, the Calypso to go to Antarctica. No, no, no. You know, but it's funny, you know, today they talk about, look, we found things under Antarctica, uh, you know, li life under Antarctica, but they did it back then. Yeah. You see, the, on this boat is a Texas Clipper, that the uh, uh, Oceanographic Vessel yeah. of Texas University. Is this is the Calypso? That, oh. Okay, how, how big was the Calypso? Uh, for 45 meters. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, and it, that, that it packs a wall. They did a lot with the boat. That, that was Cousteau. Yeah. That means uh, maybe not a big boat, maybe not a lot of money, but a lot of imagination, a lot of uh, courage. 
you know, it was fantastic that Cousteau went to Antarctica, but it was extremely dangerous. Um, what, there had to be something that motivated him to go do this. Because it's, it's a little, it's, it's, there's risky and there's a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, because it, 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 it seems crazy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cousteau, in fact, decided to go to Antarctica uh, in 1972, 1973. You can see Calypso here. Yes. In Antarctica. Okay. And uh, clearly, Calypso, she's not an icebreaker. No, she's one She's just all uh, minesweeper. Yeah. So for many years, uh, Cousteau was using the, the Calypso li like uh, the only oceanographic. Uh, French uh, ship. Yes. He was working for a lot, lot of programs that people doesn't know. There are science, scientific program, uh, uh, oil, uh, oil looking program, uh, program looking etc. Like so, Cousteau had all this all this program by the French state. That was the only way for Cousteau to to maintain financially the, mm -hmm. the job for Calypso and the team. Yeah. But Cousteau was a quite very independent character, mm -hmm. and uh, he was looking more and more about, uh, on the science, etc., and, and the ecology. So, when he was a director of uh, the Museum of uh, Monaco, he heard that uh, the French uh, government, with the goal, start a program, a nuclear program, to create a bomb. Yes. But when you create a nuclear program, what you do with the waste? Yes. The nuclear waste. Mm -hmm. oh. For the government, but very simple. Just drop the waste, the waste, nuclear waste, in the sea. Yes. Dump, dump uh, the barrel between uh, Monaco and Corsica. Mm -hmm. And Cousteau got this information by some scientists. They say, hey, this is very dangerous, it's very stupid to do that. And they, they, ha they asked Cousteau, okay, you are well known, can you help us? Mm -hmm. So he went to a newspaper. Uh, he started to talk on the radio, ah, okay. and, uh, and he warned mm -hmm. uh, the, the people from the South uh, French coast that it would be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, w when the train with all this um, barrier of nuclear waste went down from the north of France to Toulon, mm -hmm. and Nice to, to put on a boat and, and put in the sea, yes. the train has to stop. Yes. So, the train went back. So the nuclear waste had been dropped in the North Sea. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Didn't know what to do. Right. But Cousteau, in fact, just warned the population about the, this risk. Yes. He was the only one so courageous to oppose the goal. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So after that, the goal um, uh, asked Cousteau to come to Paris, meet the Ministry of Energy. Yeah. Yeah. They said, okay, okay, you made it very well. Now it's finished for you. Mm -hmm. No more contract. So the two were suddenly with no more mission mm -hmm. for the Calypso. He had no more, he couldn't even pay uh, the team. Yeah. And even after all, all he had done uh, in the French research, he was out. Mm -hmm. But for Cousteau, Cousteau was a very good guy about that. He said, behind every problem is a solution. Yes. And he explained to me that was the best was the, the lucky guy to be out of the French system. Mm -hmm. So, because he had no more program, he said, okay, so for so many years, I, was, uh, I wanted to go to Antarctica. So mm -hmm. now it's time, we're free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still have the boat, I've still some money. Mm -hmm. who, won't go, who won't come with me? So he made a meeting with, uh, with his team, and uh, the team was very intrigued. They said, okay, no, no more job, no more salary. Uh, they asked Cousteau what, what we can do. And Cousteau said that uh, have a program, we will go to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And most of the people working for him, they were engineers, uh, they were not, not the, the first group, they were the second group. Yeah. And uh, they, they didn't like it, they said, well, what, how we go to Antarctica? With what, with what boat? Yes. Uh, with the Calypso. But the Calypso is not icebreaker. No. Okay, you don't want to come, don't come. Mm -hmm. So, we were just uh, with a little group uh -huh. accept yeah. to go with Cousteau. But for, for some of these guys I discussed uh, with Falco, it was a sort of suicide mi mission. Yeah. Cousteau yeah. was so disappointed. He said, okay, at least I will, I will finish in a, 
the great stuff. Mm -hmm. And and the, as you see on the card here, yeah, let's, it. Yeah, let's uh, let's actually show this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. They, they went from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. So they went to Antarctica, and it was a fantastic mission because no, nobody dove Antarctica before. Mm -hmm. okay, but, uh, I think that Cousteau was quite lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a, the good thing for him, because after that, that was a good time for, for Cousteau, because, uh, because he came back from uh, Antarctica with a film, uh, a great film, mm -hmm. about Antarctic expedition. And this film could open him, the, uh, with the help of the National Geographic, open for him the, the gate of the American tea. Mm -hmm. When Cousteau came back in Galveston, where, where the Calypso was in reparation, mm -hmm. he was totally out of mind. Yeah. He was done. Yeah. But by chance, a son, Philippe Cousteau, who was, he was married with an American girl and he was living in uh, California, he had, a, he had a TV series called o Oasis in the Space. Yes. So he had contact with uh, the TV, American TV. Because, uh, only in America, you had a color TV mm -hmm. in front of black and white. Yes, in, in one channel. In one channel. Right. Under the control of the state. Okay. So Cousteau could do nothing in France, he was gone. Yeah. But he could meet, uh, I think, the, what was, uh, the manager of uh, NBC, David Wolper. They were looking for a TV series mm -hmm. with adventure in color around the world. So they asked Cousteau, maybe, can you do for us a, a TV series? Mm -hmm. And Cousteau said, OK, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But it was a big program for like another 20 show that you have to make in the sea, not in the studio. Yes. Not like flipper in a corner or fake film. Yeah, really? Yeah. Go in the sea. Yeah. And they had to do it again mm -hmm. all around the world and they had to change the equipment to mm -hmm. make them more uh, spectacular uh, yes. for the TV. The silver like, like suits, the, the hats. Yeah, yeah. The hat, the, the, the plastic hat. Yeah. So they, they, they start like that, and it was a good, good luck yeah. for Cousteau to, to redo again. Now he pushed for control, right? I, I, I'm okay to do, to do this series, but I won't be the only one who decide how to edit the film, mm -hmm. the text, and don't cut my, my series with a soap opera, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. soap uh, publicity. And he made it. Yeah. And uh, that's what you have seen. You know, it's not a lot different than some of the, um, I hate to say, it's almost like the, one of the first YouTube channels because, you know, he basically, he wrote it, he filmed it, he produced it. That's what people do today, you know, for YouTube. They, they, they do it themselves because they don't want a third party telling them what to do. And, and, and in his case, thank God that he did it the way he did because it was spectacular. I, I think it was uh, the right time for Cousteau yeah. to do what he wants, mm -hmm. he was the only one yeah. to do that. He was the only one to do that. Mm -hmm. who could do that. He had the boat, he had the team, yeah. he had the knowledge, he had the camera, he had the light, he had a scooter, <coughs> he had everything. Helicopter, helicopter, submarine. everything. And yeah. suddenly, he, were, he, were, he got money. Gave him the possibility to, to have enough money to do yeah. the, 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 the thing. But I was not on board, but what, what, what I knew, yeah. that was very complicated because they, they start. On, they start by the Red Sea. The first movie was about shark. Yeah. And in the Red Sea, they had a very hard time. The, the water was not clear, the shark was not here. Yeah. They had a lot of uh, storm with the sand. The sand. Mm -hmm. They had uh, the, the war uh, between uh, Israel and uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. etc. So, but they had to make it. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, they, they had to invent every day. Mm -hmm. And on board, they had a, a photographer, Louis Marden from National Geographic, who said, Calypso is the only boat in the world where have more, more wine than water. Because <laughs> they didn't have any water maker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were just using the, the soft water to drink or uh -huh. to read the camera, uh -huh. not the shower. No, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> but uh, this time is over. I imagine for a little Parisian like me, yeah. with no... Uh, big relation, family relation, uh, background, uh, university, nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I could manage to, to, to be part of this team. That's, that's, a, that's, that's incredible. It's incredible. No, yeah. but, even for me. Yeah. But, but it was my dream. Mm -hmm. it, but it was only a dream. I mean, everybody said to me, my parents and my friends said, 
he will never make it. Yeah. It's impossible. Because this guy is so is so difficult to contact them. But no, no. Uh -huh. So, okay. Well, you stayed in contact with him for years before he even hired you to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was uh, trying to keep in contact with him. I was showing him, because I made a lot of jobs before. I made other books, so I was sending him my books. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, I made the books about that. I made the books about diving. Uh, the first book I made about about diving, and I remember the first time I came to the Cousteau uh, apartment, he had my book, mm -hmm. with other book, so I really like it. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's great. No, I, I liked it in uh, like the, that part of the video where, where he's going through your, your, all your pictures that, from uh, Galapagos that you have made. And, and yeah, but it was in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Film. yeah. No, the, the, the good thing for me is that Cousteau was good for everything. Mm -hmm. But the only thing he didn't know to do was sketching. Yeah. And one of the guys of the team, it was Falco, said to me, you need to have a car, like a joker with Cousteau. Okay. If you want and interest him, if you want to seduce him, you, have, you need to have a joker, something that he can do. He cannot do, yeah. Because he's, you know, you know, he's a good writer, he can make good music, uh, he makes film, he, yeah. He, he, he know how the mechanic of the boat, he know uh -huh. how to, to drive the boat, he know how to dive. Right? So he's a multiple uh, facet. Uh, That's the person, yes. Yeah. Some yeah. Of little sort of genius. Mm -hmm. But he looks for people who can do what he can do. Yeah. That's that only why he will, he, you have a change he chooses you. Mm. Before you can even get there, he always seems to, he gives you a test. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, something, let's see what you can do. Yeah, well, I'm sure before I went on Calypso, I had to spend a week with uh, Albert Falco. Yeah. In, a, in this place, uh, in Sormio, where, where Falco had a, had a little place, Sormio here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sormio, he had a little yeah. uh, house here. Uh -huh. And uh, I spent a week with him. Yeah. And he, he tested me, so Falco. That's why Falco was testing everybody. Mm -hmm. he, 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 if he were coming back, he said to Cousteau, no, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have uh, two two person. You have Falco and uh, the Cous Simon Cousteau, the Cousteau wife. Mm -hmm. You put the foot on board. Five minutes after, if you if he doesn't like you, out. That was like, like the round table of the yeah. of the night, you know, yeah. like, like King Arthur mm -hmm. <laughs> with Cousteau mm -hmm. with different different uh, knights like uh, Falco uh, and the other one, and you, you have to you have to fit. Exactly where you, you have to find your spot. Your spot, yeah. Don't try to go to do something out of your spot. Yeah. They, they don't need you. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.